You think you own whatever land you land on. The earth is just a dead thing you can claim. But I know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. You think the only people who are people are the people who look and think like you. But if you walk the footsteps of a stranger, you'll learn things you never knew, you never knew. Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned? Can you sing with all the voices of the mountain? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Wasn't that fantastic? Yes, it was. <laughs> That was Busiswe Samisa, 16 years old, from the Harlem School of Arts, just at the top of the park. The young people today are just so talented. Wasn't she marvelous? Yeah. Let's give her another hand. Good morning, friends, special guests, members of the press, fellow New Yorkers. I am Jose Ditchin, an eighth grader at Kappa 4, right across the street over there. Kappa 4 is the Knowledge and Power Preparatory Academy. Our school is graded with an A, I want you to know. Yeah. And I'm Nicole Polanco. We're here today with some of our classmates, along with the kids from Mall Hall High School. Welcome to our press conference. That's right, our press conference. You've seen Mayor Bloomberg give his state of the city. Today, we're going to give you the state of the city. Trees! More precisely, we're going to update you on just how far we've come on the city's historic plan to plant one million trees. Yeah. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's review what we've got here. Good morning. I am Yasmeli Payano, and I help plant the great tree number one on October 9th, 2007 on East 165th Street in the Bronx. I don't remember all the details, but I do remember that Big Bird and Mayor Bloomberg was there. <laughs> a group of third graders, including me, celebrated the occasion with a reading of poems that they had written themselves about trees. This it was a great day, but it was only the beginning. Hi, my name is Desiree Eastman. I'm a teacher at PS 155. On October the 29th, 2008, my school planted tree 100, 100,000, I'm, I'm a little nervous, 111,000 111. So all the ones. It was the Million Tree first, first birthday party that Mitlip was there and Mayor Bloomberg. It was a great day, but we had a lot more trees to go. Hi, I'm Sharon Stoney, a daycare provider in Queens. And I'm her husband, Thomas Stoney. <laughs> On October the 5th, 2009, we were blessed to have tree number 250,000 planted in our front yard in St. Albans, Queens. And you know what, guys? I wrote a song about that. Um, can I sing it now, honey? Uh, excuse me, one second, James Brown, Thomas Stoney. Not right now. <laughs> Get your turn. 
I just wanted to say that every time I look at that tree, I look at our sweet magnolia, southern magnolia, I'm very happy about it. And I can imagine how happy everyone's going to be when the million trees are planted. Thank you. And that sets the stage for today and another historic moment. To take it the rest of the way, I want to introduce someone who had a little something to do with getting us here. In fact, without his support, we wouldn't even be here. He's not the experienced public speaker that I am, so take it easy on him. But please welcome my good friend, Mayor Mike Bloomberg. Well, Nicole and Jose, thank you, and my good friends, and good morning, everyone. Um, this really is an important day for New York City because a, uh, a really important tree is about to hit the ground. Uh, does everyone know what number that is? <laughs> now, if my math is correct, uh, we are halfway to a million trees. And if you want to know about schedule, because everybody on, wants to know, is it over budget, is it over t coming in late or whatever, we are 12 months ahead of schedule. If Charlie Rangel could get those in Congress to do that, we'd all be better off. Uh, Robert, we're not going to let you off either. Uh, Anyways, I think there's no better place to hit this milestone than right here in beautiful, historic St. Nicholas, Nicholas Park. Yeah. Now, Adrian Benepe is our Parks Commissioner, but Adrian cannot top this. This park was designed in 1890 by the Parks Commissioner himself. What was his name? Samuel Parsons Jr. You are right, even though it doesn't say that in my notes. <laughs> um, the original plan had a clear, harmonious vision, which I'm told was a high hill made higher, a rugged slope made more rugged, a deep valley made deeper, following nature's lead. And that's exactly what the city has been doing in the past few years, partnering with the divine Bette Midler and her New York Restoration Project. To, yes, a lot, of, a lot of applause for her. You know, I always say a lot of people that help the city are great New Yorkers, great Americans. Bette Midler is the model for all of us. She really is somebody who's had great careers in her own life, but also manages to give back and make this city a lot better. Uh, we are at the Restoration Project and us trying to follow nature's lead and bring all the benefits of trees to our parks and everywhere else in the city that could use a little more green. Now we've been planting trees in our parks, we've been planting trees on our streets and in front of public housing and small businesses and in schoolyards and churchyards and even in backyards. So just take a look at this map. A lot of green. Hard to see that so much green. Pretty soon it's going to be all one green color. That is what 500,000 trees look like. So can you imagine when you double the number, there won't be any white left? Uh, we're planting a true urban forest, and we won't stop until we reach our million tree target. How does that sound? We New Yorkers love our trees because trees really do give us so much. They give us cleaner air. Uh, which helps reduce uh, pollutants that trigger diseases like asthma. They give us more shade, which helps keep our streets cool and reduce our energy use. And of course, they give us beautiful neighborhoods, which helps make our city the best in the world in which to live and work. And if you own a home, it makes your home worth more. Trees give so much in return, they really ask for very little. Uh, just a little love and attention a little tree LC. It's cute. Come on, you gotta think about it. Maybe you are a better speaker than I am. <laughs> um, government can't do it alone though. And uh, a million trees needs a million helping hands and that's just what we're focusing on today. In addition to helping us plant new trees, which are definitely uh, which we definitely need, and helping us buy new trees by donate donating to the New York Restoration Project. We, nearly, we really need your help to take care of our trees. 
And the best way is to adopt the tree. And you can call 311 or visit the Million Trees NYC webpage at nyc.gov and actually select the tree that you want to adopt on a map. It just couldn't be easier. A little water, a little mulch, a little love. And uh, all we're asking is uh, just to do that. And uh, Robert Jackson's going to be adopting a tree this afternoon. I know it, because I'm going to pressure him into it. Uh, and that's why today's theme is I'm in. And you can see how the I and the M in I'm in is actually a one and an M, which stands for one million. Pretty clever, huh? Very clever. Let me introduce you now to someone who is definitely in. He belongs here today for three reasons, three great reasons. First, he is a New Yorker, born in Brooklyn. This past February, he came back to New York, and he knows the importance of giving back using his foundation to support youth development and, and education across this country. Second, he's here because he's graciously agreed to film a PSA for Million Trees NYC and wanted to talk about his own commitment to the cause. And finally, he belongs here because for some of the kids here, um, for some of the kids, this is New York. Camelo Anthony. How's everybody out there? Great. Um, you know, today I just want to just let you guys know that, um, you know, first of all, it's great to be here celebrating, an, you know, an initiative um, that gives all of us a chance to, to be more. Um, as a kid growing up, being outdoors, um, playing, this, playing outside and seeing trees and grass was important. Um, when I was growing up in Brooklyn, there wasn't no trees and wasn't no grass where I was at, so I always wanted you know, to see some greenery. So now is a chance to, um, you know, donate some trees. I just want to let you guys know that I'm definitely in. I'm in, so, you know, that's, that's the key words for the day for myself. I'm in. Spread the word to all the New Yorkers out there, and everybody jump on board. Um, and I hope you guys will join me. So thank you. Thank you, Camilla. Our next guest is the executive director he has his microphone up here. I'm down here. Uh, our next guest is the executive director of New York Restoration Project, the group that provides such magnificent leadership and support to Million Trees NYC. Amy Freitag, I know you're in. Well, you got to be a great mayor when you get a day like this to plant the half million tree. Well done. Um, on behalf of Bette Midler, who couldn't be here today, and I know it just breaks her heart because she'd love to be here, and our trustees and all the staff of New York Restoration Project, I just want to thank all of you for helping us reach this incredible milestone. We are halfway there. Yeah. Give yourself a round of applause. And for this, we really have a million people to thank, but I definitely want to thank our lead sponsors for the Million Trees Initiative, Toyota and BMP Paribas. These are two companies that are deeply committed to New York being the greenest and most vibrant city possible. I want to personally thank um, the, the people that we get to work with every day, Everett Schenk um, and his wonderful colleague Michelle Sicard, wonderful Pat Pineda and Juliet Williams. They are with us every step of the way. Thanks to you, New York really is a better place to live, work, and play, and we thank you so much for your partnership. I also just have to thank um, our incredible partners. We get to work in the greatest city in the world with the most wonderful parks department in the world and really with the best leadership New York City's ever seen. I want to thank Mayor Bloomberg and Commissioner Adrian Benepe. And finally, to every New Yorker who has rolled out of bed early on a weekend morning to go stand in line to adopt a tree or to go dig a hole or maybe 10 holes to plant a tree, we want to thank you, because we definitely would not be here without your help. And uh, I have to say, if you haven't lifted up a shovel yet, don't worry. There's still time. Uh, we want you to plant, donate, or adopt a tree today. Please be one in a million. Thank you. Amy, thank you. In addition to BNP Paribas and Toyota, um, we have some elected officials who have helped and continue to help the city, starting with the congressman from the area, Charlie. Wrangle. Charlie. 
Thank you for being our mayor and making this great city even more beautiful. I want to thank the park commissioner and the whole team and the private sector as well as public and our wonderful youngsters that are going to be our leaders tomorrow, but some of them sound like they think they're leaders today. But having said that, I'm certainly, if our great president was here, he would look beyond you and see those shovels and say, what a great job we're doing and put America back to work. But one thing that we all know is that only God can make a tree, but it does take government to make certain it grows. Thank you. Charlie, I guess it is fair to say this is a shovel-ready project. You can argue about others, but I can see the shovels all ready to go. Robert Jackson? Well, thank you, Mayor, and uh, let me thank the students from Kappa 4 and Mott Hall uh, and 155, I think you said? Yeah, I'm trying to remember all of that. But clearly, when I walked in here, I said good morning to everyone, and I say good morning to you again. Let the sun shine in. That's the word, because clearly, I'm in. And that's why I put this button on to indicate that I'm in. And especially St. Nicholas Park, I remember growing up on 148th Street between St. Nicholas and Convent. I used to play in this park as a little kid myself. And in fact, as you know, especially, especially when you have children, where do you go when you have children? You go to playgrounds and you go to parks. And you want to make sure that it's all green. So Mayor Bloomberg, pretty soon that map is going to be all green with one million trees. So we'll be back here, hopefully in St. Nicholas Park or another park, celebrating one million trees before your tenure and my tenure ends. Good. But let me, uh, <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, planting trees <laughs> is extremely important. And, and the commissioner, I promise you that I will adopt a tree. And in fact, my newsletter will come out in two months I'm going to be asking all of the constituents of the 7th Councilmatic District to adopt a tree. Thank you very much. Councilman, thank you. I should point out we also have the great state senator, Malcolm Smith. Comes from Queens, but here he is, St. Nicholas Park. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank all of the small business owners who take care of the new trees outside of their businesses and all of the individuals who take care of the new trees outside of their houses. They really do clean the air and enhance property values and give people a better sense of belonging and a smile on their face, which makes them happier to be in your neighborhood, be in your store or whatever. Uh, we all benefit from all of this. And finally, to the kids behind me. Now, you want to know why did we ask so many kids to uh, be here with us today? And really, it's because they are the future of our city, and the future of our trees is up to them. Um, we are, some of us are getting older. I wouldn't say that about anybody else in the audience, but, you know, let me just tell you, getting old has its pains, but it's a lot better than the alternatives. Uh, Charlie is with me on that one, I think, more than anybody else. Uh, ultimately, these kids, seriously, are the ones who will care for the trees and care for the rest of us. And they are the ones uh, the, with whom the trees will, uh, for whom the trees will give shade and clean air and beautify for generations to come. The city and the NYRP do tremendous work to make this program bear fruit. Fruit on trees, get that connection. It's hard to do tree jokes, folks. <laughs> and they will, uh, won't get, to, and without them we won't get to a million. So kids, are you willing to be part of getting us to one million trees? Will you take care of one million trees? Amen. I didn't hear that. Amen. So we're all in. And if you think this wasn't staged, you don't understand how things work. All right, it's time to plan. Thomas, let's hear that song now. <laughs> 